Okay, so today I'm going to, going to be going over the uh, separation of variables day one presentation. Um, all right, so this uh, this example says find a general solution y equals f, or f of x to the differential equation dy dx equals x plus three. Um, just real quick, uh, what is a differential equation? Well, when we think of normal equations, we think of you know things that have y's and x's in them. You know, x, y, c's, q, r, s's, alphas, betas, gammas, deltas. You know, whatever letters or symbols you want to have in them, and you're you know solving for something, and it might show a relationship between things. Um, but with a differential equation, not only can you have x, y, z, squares, triangles, circles, you know, whatever you're using for variables. Um, you can also have the derivatives of certain variables with respect to each other. So in this case, um, we have dy dx as a variable in our equation. So this is a variable, but it's kind of you know it's mas it's masking itself because you know it's giving us dy dx and it's telling us what dy dx is. And the real question is if it's asking you to solve the differential equation. You know, it's asking you, you know, if dy dx equals this, then what does y equal? So it's you know, kind of like a scavenger hunty thing. We're giving we're getting information about the function's derivative, but um, you know, not about um, the function itself. So we have to backtrack and and we're gonna have to integrate to get that information back. Um, the general solution means that there'll be an unknown constant in your solution. And so, like, you know, if you look at a graph of, um, you know, this is why you have to add plus C whenever you integrate um, indefinitely. So, like, if you have some graph here, this function right here has the same derivative as this function right here and this function right here within the limitations of my drawing capabilities. Um, but they all have the same derivative. You know, if I go to some specific point, like right here, here's the slope. If I go to that same point, here's the slope, here's the slope, and here's the slope. Um, you know, minus my, you know, not so wonderful drawings, they all have the same slope. And so any of these equations could be the solution. But what you notice is that this is only the case when, you know, we're kind of like shifting them up, you know, or down. And all we're doing is adding some arbitrary constant plus C to the end of it. And so that's how we get that, you know, information back. And then later you might be able to solve for a particular solution where you say, well, if this point, you know, if the origin, this point zero, zero is a part of my graph, well, then it has to be this one. And if it's, you know, zero, one or whatever this is, well, it has to be that one. And so, you know, that's information that you can get later. But for now, um, we're going to get a solution that has a C in it. And so we're going to get this family of solutions. Um, y equals f of x means state your answer explicitly, solve for y. So we don't want any like x squared plus y squared equals um, 25 stuff going on. You need to have y equals something that only has x's in it. f of x means something that only has x's in it. Um, and so to actually go about solving this, what we're doing first is separating the variables. That's what this is called. When right, we, right now we have a quotient of things with y's and x's, but we need to separate it out so that this right side, and it doesn't matter if it's the right or the left, but you know, so that one side only has x's and one side only has y's. Um, all right, so how, that hap how this happened here, um, you know, what went on? There was the separation of variables by multiplying this dx over. And then that leaves you with this. And then you can just integrate both sides because, you know, integrating both sides still maintains equality in the equation. It's just like adding three to both sides of an equation. You're not really changing anything about it. Um, and so integrating both sides and evaluating those integrals, if you take dy, which is a tiny little piece of y, and an integral, which is adding all of those pieces up, um, you know, if you add up all the tiny little pieces of y, you, you get exactly what you chopped into pieces, which is y. And integrating this side via our uh, inverse power rules, we have um, x squared over 2, 1 half x squared over 2. No, x squared over 2 um, plus 3x, tacking an x onto that one here. And you still need your arbitrary constant. And um, 
just on a side note, um, we need to make note that this is actually kind of like the second constant, and this is just something you should be aware of for the appreciation of the beauty of it all. Um, when you integrate dy, what you really get is y plus c, and that equals 1 half x squared plus 3x plus some other c. The c's are, you know, might be the same, might be different, who knows. Um, but what we can do is we can subtract one of the c's over and say, you know, minus c, minus c here. Well, that just leaves us with y here, and we have all this uh, stuff here, which is unaffected, and some constant minus another constant is just some other constant. So, you know, it's, you know, if I say 586 minus 284, you can at least tell me that it's going to be another number, and that's what you're really doing here. So, um, you're just saying, you know, you're covering yourself and saying that it could be any, it could be one half x squared plus three x plus anything at all which is, you know, how you're moving this thing up and down. And based on that, that's this family of solutions. So it's a big, happy family of solutions. Um, and that is a general solution. And that's just saying, make sure it's solved explicitly. So this is y equals blob with x's in it. And there are only x's here, so this is definitely um, y as a function of x. All right, here we got another one. Um, pretty much the same concept, same instructions, and the same scenario. Multiplying that dx over um, to both sides. And so that shifts over to here. And you get dy equals x sine of x squared dx. This uh, bit of integration is a little harder, although you know we should know that this side's just going to turn out to be y. So u substitution going on. u equals x squared. du equals 2x. This should say u du equals 2x dx because du dx equals 2x, so therefore du equals 2x dx. All right, so 2dx um, over here and Let's see here. There should be an x there as well. I shall fix that. There should be an x here still. And our 2x dx, that's what we can find here. So we got our x and our 2 dx. So therefore, that gets you 2x dx. And um, at that point, you can blob all of this together into a glorious du. And that thing is u since you said u was x squared, referring back to that. And so then you get integral of dy equals 1 half integral of sine of u du. And you just go about integrating as you normally would with your u substitution. Um, and uh, that's about it. And this is you know already a function of x. And you got your plus c here, and you mentally transferred that c over. And so that is um, all that you have to do. And what this is doing over here, this is checking your solution. Um, with differential equations, there's no excuse to ever get one wrong because, um, or if you're wrong, you should at least know you're wrong because all you have to do is take the derivative of both sides of your differential equation with you know whatever this variable is, and you should end up with this in the end. And if you don't, then you did something wrong, and you know you need to go back and fix something. You shouldn't just leave things you know wrong and try and push it under the table hoping that no one notices. That's not good math. Um, so taking the derivative with respect to x, just applying your normal chain rules and stuff. Derivative of minus cosine is sine, and you got your uh, x squared, which when you chain it, you get your 2x. The 2s cancel out, and you get x sine of x squared plus 0, because no matter what this c is, it could be 500 million or 0, the derivative of a constant is always 0, which is, again, some insight onto the fact that you know, no matter how many different solutions you have, you could draw you know a bunch of curves on top of each other. They're all going to have the same they're all going to be solutions to that differential equation, which is why you have to have this C right here to protect you and give you a general solution. 
And that's just simplifying that out and restating. All right, um, another one here, um, multiplying the dx over, you get this, integrating some u substitution, 1 over u, 1 over x cubed plus 3. The derivative with respect to x of u is e to the x. Multiplying that around, you get this. And then you stick your ln in there because you're integrating the 1 over u. dy integrates to y. Um, and you plug your u back in because you always want to leave this in terms of x. And you have your constant. And finally, um, you know, there's this domain issue on ln of x. So for ln of x, x must be greater than 0. Otherwise, the world blows up. And so with that said, you need to have these absolute value signs here. Initially, when you integrate, that's your first instinct to always protect yourself. But if you look inside at what's being natural logarithmed, um, e to the x, the graph looks like this, and it asymptotes at y equals 0, and so that is always going to be greater than 0, and adding 3 to it certainly isn't going to make it negative, and so this thing on the inside is always going to be positive, and hence you can get rid of the absolute value signs because there's no need to protect yourself from that and the arbitrary constant remains. All right, I'm just going to go back and check uh, this last one here and show that differentiating both sides will give you the solution to the differential equation. Um, so let's do that. y equals ln of e to the x plus 3 plus c and then take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. dy dx equals ln, so 1 over whatever is in here, e to the x plus 3, times the derivative of the inside for your chain, which is just e to the x, plus the derivative of c, which is 0. And that gives you, um, in all of its glory, um, the solution to this differential equation, or you know, your original differential equation which says that dy dx is equal to e to the x over e to the x plus 3, which is what you expected. That matches this, and so you did not fail, and you know that you did this correctly, um, and there shouldn't be any doubt of it. So um, hopefully that was helpful, and I will be continuing to uh, lecture over the other u substitution, or not u substitution, the other uh, separation of variables videos.